football. Brought to you by Chevrolet, the heartbeat of America, the cars more people depend on. We believe our most important investment is an investment in relationships. And by Canon Bubble Jet Personal Printers. Laser quality at dot matrix prices. This is a rich and storied rivalry between Alabama and Georgia. Look at this in Athens. Back deep is Andre Hastings and Chad Wilson for the Georgia Bulldogs. Hemp Green will kick it off for Alabama. Last year's Georgia win has been a rallying cry this week for Alabama. We're set for the kick. Rocket. Ooh. It's Hastings at the 12. And he's brought down at the 25-yard line. That's where Greg Talley will take the offense. Senior, look at his statistics. Want to remind you that two weeks ago against LSU, he marched his team down, Tim, on the first series very efficiently. The backs led by Max Strong and Larry Ware, their leading rusher against LSU. First and ten from the 25. The backs are Ware and Strong. Strong goes for about two and a half yards. The Georgia offensive line led by Alec Millen, a very intense individual, and Bernard Williams, all six foot nine, two hundred. It is second and eight for the Bulldogs. Tally changing the play. Evans. So they will be facing a third and eight. And a look at the Alabama defense. John Copeland, Robert Stewart, Eric Curry Stewart is a Lombardi nominee early in the running. The linebackers led by John Sullins, a Butkus nominee. And Mark on your screen locked on to Hastings. That is his desire. Boy, what a great sack that time. So it's three and out. Scott Armstrong comes on to punt for Georgia. David Palmer is back. He lets it bounce at the 45, and it's down by Georgia at the 43. A 37-yard punt for Georgia, and Alabama takes over from there. It is first and ten for Alabama on the 44-yard line, and that is where Danny Woodson takes over. He only threw 11 passes all of last year. He's a six-foot-two-inch, 200-pound senior, and he will be handing off to Saran Stacy quite a few times this afternoon. Stacy out for a gain of about four yards to the 47, out to the 48, the stop by John Allen of Georgia. I want to tell you something. Toby Shields, the center for Alabama. You see him there, 250-pounder. He just took Casey Barnum, who is 265, and put him on his back. That's why they gained a big chunk of yardage out of that. A very small Georgia, uh, Alabama offensive line. Second down. Toss to Stacy. No gain on that play. And a fumble. I think the fumble was after the fact. Stopped by Dwayne Simmons of Georgia. A look at the defensive line led by Casey Barnum, the nose guard. 
The linebackers, Dwayne Simmons, their leading tackler from the end of this game, with 17 tackles. And Chuck Carswell, defensive secondary. It is third and five for the tie. Let's make that third and eight. Stacy, look out. He's got some room. And he'll have a first down. A 15-yard run by Saran Stacy, stopped by David Hargett. Saran Stacy, Gene Stallings calls him the best back he's ever coached. Little inside pass, very safe play. If he drops it, it's incomplete. But once he gets outside and into the secondary, he's on his own. Just a very talented speed back. Came into this game with 175 yards in two games. That's 87 yards per average. And he says he hadn't even hit a stride yet. He's still feeling his way back. He sat out all of last year with a knee injury. Stacy again. Nowhere to go this time. It's a gain of about two yards. Stopped up by Casey Barnum. A couple of things to look for early. Last week, the Tide had six fumbles, two interceptions, nine penalties. They lost 35 nothing. I'm telling you, folks, that's a bad night. They want to get something going early. They want to score early. They want to have absolutely no mishaps or turnovers. They need confidence. Second and nine. Stacy again. And he gets down to the 35-yard line this time. Saran Stacy. He had 1,079 yards and 17 touchdowns in 1989. He stopped on that play by Kurt Douglas. Stacy will throw the option pass. He has thrown twice so far this year. Two completions, one of them for a touchdown to Prince Wembley. Third with five to go. Woodson throws complete. Georgia's and got a fumble. the fumble. Georgia has the ball. Kevin Turner caught the pass, but fumbled the ball. And turnovers continue to haunt Alabama. We just talked about it. On the other side of the field, Georgia's plus seven in the turnover margin. Watch this now. This is a nice play by Woodson, who got out of the pressure, waited for the corner to come cover him, and then threw back. And Turner turned, and watch, here comes the hit. And Thompson puts his hat right on the ball, strips him free. Turnovers have killed Alabama in the first two games. Exactly what Gene Stallings did not want. Georgia takes over on the 27-yard line. The handoff is to Garrison Hurst. And he's tackled by Robert Stewart. You know, in the preseason, when you talked about Georgia-Alabama, you talked about Georgia as being a team which was rebuilding. You talked about Alabama as a team which won its last seven out of nine ball games. Alabama was going to be heavily favored. Well, that's turning quickly here now with Ray Goff's club. Greg Talley, the quarterback for the Bulldogs, second and 11. Passes complete, just short of the first down marker to Arthur Marshall. Kept his feet in, good concentration, made the catch. You know, if there's one guy you want to control, it's the guy in the middle, number 34, Stewart. See him there from Alabama? So what do you do? You put two guys on him. Look at this. Here's big old Tellus, Lamont Tellus. He's 6'4", 268 pounds. They also put the four on him. He's 270. Just lock up, take Stewart, and ride him out of there. I don't know if that right hook was legal, though. Third down and one. Harvey and Hurst are the backs in the eye. Strong in motion. Hurst with a lot of room for the first down. Georgia with their first first down of the ball game. The stop by George Teague in the secondary. Everybody's talking about Larry Ware, the scat back, but number five, Garrison Hurst, was a leading rusher last year. Has 4-3 speed, number one prospect, preseason all-conference. He can hurt you. Ball at the Georgia 44. It's first and 10 on the 44-yard line for Georgia. Little movement on the offensive line. Robert Stewart points to the center. Dead ball. 
It is procedure, snap infraction, the first down. You get that from a very young club, and George is just that, a very young club. Alabama took its time, was moving around. You see the center move. You see the quarterback move. That right there is illegal. You can't do that before the snap. But Alabama's being very salty here now. They're switching things up. They're moving players around. They're giving Tally a lot of different looks defensively. Right now he's looking at first and 15 at the 39. A hand up to Hurst. He's brought down by Antonio London, the six foot two inch, 220 pound junior. They made four yards. A gain of four yards on the play. London Mark, let me make this point. Talking to Gene Stallings yesterday, he said one of his weaknesses defensively, and it is a very strong Georgia Alabama Georgia. defense, is the out outside linebacker spot. It's weak. So if you have a weakness, what do you do? You hide it. So they're bringing it up. They're giving a 3 4 4 4 look to hide the outside linebackers. Second and 11. There's a fumble, and Alabama comes up with it. And that's the result. Another Georgia turnover. Alabama will take over with great field position on the 40-yard line, Tim. Pressure comes from outside 94. That's John Copeland. Defeats his blocker, comes pressure, backside, balls loose, bang, free. Alabama's got it. Well, that ball seemed to be on the turf for a long time. John Sullen recovered the fumble for Alabama. No score in the first quarter, 7.45 to play. Danny Woodson, first and 10, backs on the eye. The toss to Stacy. Bowls his way over the 35 inside, close to the 34-yard line. Well, we've got some great college football games coming up here on ABC next Saturday, beginning at 12 noon Eastern time. The number one ranked Florida State Seminoles take on the Michigan Wolverines, and then later on, you'll see a host of games, including Georgia Tech and Clemson. Back to the action. Kevin Turner breaks it all the way inside to the 11-yard line of Georgia. He's stopped up by John Allen, a gain of 24 yards. Kevin Turner, watch this quick opener, left side, just to, they fake the power, instead they go the quick opener to Turner, he breaks it up there, they talk about him as being a receiver and a blocker, you don't expect to see him carrying it, consequently that's what Georgia was doing, they weren't keying on him, they were keying on Stacy. so when you give it quickly to Turner, big game, Woodson hands it off to Turner again this time, he gets the nose of the ball inside the 10, close to the 9, before he's stopped by Dwayne Simmons, the leading tackler for this Georgia team coming into the ballgame. Two carries in a row for Turner. That's an upset. Throwing a new wrinkle at Georgia. Turner's one of those real smart, calculated guys, too. Loves physics and math. <laughs> What's he doing running the football? Smart guy. A whistle on the play. A whistle came before the fumble, and there's a flag. Dead ball, it is procedure, snap and fracks against the offense. Last stay now. Boy, that's going to drive Stallings nuts. One thing he wanted to eliminate were turnovers and penalties. So what stopped him the first time was a turnover. What stops him this time? Penalty. See the center? That's Shields. Shields just jumped, moved his head before he snapped it up. So that's two procedure penalties now we've seen on the centers, both sides. Well, Tim, we've seen them against Florida last week. They had a lot of trouble with their center quarterback exchange. Second and 14 from the 15-yard line. Play action. Incomplete. The pass attempt was number 32, Prince Wembley. And you know what? When he goes back and watches these films, Woodson's going to shoot himself because he had his tight end, Steve Busky, wide open in the end zone. Instead, he went out in the flats here to Wembley, and he threw it high. But that ball shouldn't even have been thrown to Wembley. His tight end was wide open in the end zone. David Harkin broke that play up, but definitely a catchable ball. Third and 14.
Woodson tries to take off, but falls down at the 15-yard line. But he did get the ball into the middle of the field, which will help out on the field goal attempt. Casey Barnum was there for the stop. So Matt Wethington will come in to kick for Alabama. This is his first field goal attempt of the season. Gene Stallings knows nothing about how he will kick in game situation. His first as an Alabama rolling tie. 32-yard attempt. It's blocked. And no good. Somebody got a piece of that. Gene Stallings not happy. We'll be back with more. Well, you've heard of a guy named Herschel Walker, have you? Well, he can play a bit of football. In his first game on television in 1980, Walker blew by South Carolina for 219 yards, including this 76-yard run and leading his team on the way to a national championship and the SEC titles. And look at Alabama. Tremendous success in this conference. Do you know from 1971 to 1981, the only teams that won the SEC title were both here tonight, Alabama and Georgia. A decade of domination. First and 10, the toss goes to Garrison Hurt. Gain of two, and Matt Wethington came in and made a very inauspicious debut, Tim, on his first field goal attempt of the year. Well, I'll tell you what you did. You had Marshall and you had Jones cheating up there. And once they got pressure and went up high, they got a hand on it and just barely knocked it off. Now, if they hadn't closed those goalposts this year with the new rule, that would have been good. Second and nine for Georgia on the 21-yard line. Max Strong with a strong run. It's about two and a half yards. up by Michael Rogers, six foot one inch, 220 pound linebacker. Third and seven for the Bulldogs. Greg Talley still at quarterback. Play action. He's in trouble. He puts his head down, and there's a flag on the play. Tally showing a lot of guts on that play, taking off on his own. A 10-yard gain, but we'll have to wait for the flag. Watch this. Instead of running out of bounds, bang, comes right up and meets Antonio Langham head on. I think Tally got the best of it, too. Hello, Antonio. So the clipping call is on Georgia. They'll take it back from the spot of the infraction. Wow, look at Clemson. That's the third straight loss for Navy. William and Mary, not even in Division I. And the Terps, that's an upset, losing to West Virginia. How do you figure that USC team as well? This game right here has been hard to figure. Sloppy. Penalties, turnovers. Georgia has a first down and 25. It's motion on Alabama. Strong. Oh, what a block. Max Strong gets out to the 24, and what a crushing block. It was Steve Roberts through the block on the All-American Robert Stewart, the nose guard, but it's it's going to go against Alabama. Watch this now. Alabama jump. Left side of your screen. He's across right there. Ball snap penalty right there. A free play for Georgia. That was Eric Curry, the victim on the offside. Tally knew he had a free one, so he took it. Defense is all five. Five-yard penalty. Previous spot, first down. Alabama has one fumble, two penalties, one blocked field goal, 
They penetrated deep into Georgia territory twice to the 27-yard line and the 15, but for naught, they're killing themselves. This game unfolding for Alabama, much like last week against Florida. First and 20 from the 23 now. Garrison Hurst with nowhere to go. Stopped up by Steve Webb. He was met by a sea of red shirts. Webb's playing a strong football game. Already has a sack and made the tackle there when Hurst tried to cut outside. Webb's the guy that took over when Derek Thomas left. Second and 23 now at the 20-yard line. The backs are Ware and Max Strong. That's Ware. No gain on the play. He may have lost a yard. Stopped up by Jeremy Nunley. Alabama swarming on defense. I want to remind you, they were the third best defense in the country last year. Smart move not to put Zaire in as we had anticipated in the third series because Greg Talley is more of a, a leader. He's more experienced than Zaire is right now. He's been in big games like this before. Right now, when things aren't going well, you don't want to put a 19-year-old into the game. Third and 24 for Georgia. And more motion. Again, it's Eric Curry who jumped off that right side. I have to wonder if the noise is really bothering Georgia at this point. They seem very hesitant on that snap. Wait a minute now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look at Eric Curry, six foot six inches, 265 pounds, a junior. They're moving this one back against Georgia. No wonder Curry came across. He saw something. Somebody flinched and he came. Watch the left side now. See if you see somebody jump. I didn't until Curry came. That was Alabama again. Nobody drew him off. Well, Georgia going the wrong way. They got to get it straight. Let's make it third and 29 at the 14. That's a taxi ride. The handoff to Larry Ware. And he swarmed again. Time to punt for Georgia. Scott Armstrong will punt it for the Bulldogs. And Mr. Excitement for Alabama, David Palmer, the freshman, will be back. They want to get him the ball. And he'll let it bounce. And it gets a favorable Georgia bounce all the way down to the 33-yard line. A 50-yard punt, including the roll. We'll be back with more. Well, before his incredible Super Bowl victory in 1969, Joe Namath compiled 3,168 yards as Alabama's quarterback from 1962 to 1964. When Joe Namath makes a prediction, Tim Brandt, hey, you listen. Joe Willie, look at this. You talk about quarterbacks that have been successful. Stabler, Namath, Star, Todd, Rutledge, you can put in there. Super Bowl quarterbacks. The only school to have four quarterbacks that have won a Super Bowl. First and ten for Alabama now. Danny Woodson leads the attack from the 33. He hands off to Kevin Turner. Turner with nowhere to go. Great job in the middle by that Georgia defense. You had Barnum stacking things up along with Mabe and Douglas. Actually, Jennings is in the game at nose guard right now. But a great job by taking on the blocker, standing him up, not giving ground, letting the linebackers fill in behind you. Danny Woodson still the quarterback for Alabama. We have 34 seconds to play in the first quarter. This is Stacy. Actually, Derek Lassick into the ball game now, the tailback, and he takes it over up to the 37. Stopped by Dwayne Simmons. Derek Lassick had a very good game, actually, last week. Gene Stallings very happy with the way that his running backs ran the ball. 
Coaches are funny when they talk about Lassick. They say he's a New York guy. He's got that New York mentality, very squirrely. He's healthy for the first time, though. Played as a freshman and redshirted with injury problems. This will be the last play of the first quarter, and they don't get it off. So the first quarter ends with the score 0-0. Both defenses dominating the play as well as turnovers. We'll be right back. Stay with us. A look at the Denny Chimes on the campus of the University of Alabama here in Tuscaloosa. They ring those chimes every 15 minutes and sometimes after an Alabama win. I'm Mark Jones along with Tim Brandt. The score is 0 0. We're about to be begin the second quarter. The story so far defense and turnovers, and Georgia has really hurt themselves with penalties. Well, so has Alabama. Alabama's been deep into Georgia territory twice to the 27 and the 15. They've had a fumble, two penalties, and a blocked field goal. Third and six for the tie. Oh, Woodson complete over the middle to the 45-yard line. Derek Classic with a tremendous concentration chop to hang on to the ball. He took a lick. But he held on. And a look at the first quarter stats. Total plays were about even, Tim. How about total yards, though? Alabama's got 62, Georgia only twice. And again, I tell you, the tide has been in Georgia territory deep twice. The backs are in the eye. This one goes to Turner. Makes a nice cut. It gets close to the 40, about the 43. Kevin Turner, a six foot, 220 pound senior from Prattville, Alabama. He's also a Doak Walker nominee, up for one of the best running backs in the country. Alabama is moving the ball effectively, and I think Gene Stallings laid down a challenge to uh, William Barker and Stevenson, John Stevenson on their right side. They had four games against Florida, so he's running right up behind them. First and ten for Alabama. This is Stacy. Tried to make a move, couldn't get away from the tackler, though. Dwayne Simmons. The inside linebacker with another one, another tackle. And again, they go that right side behind the right guard, Barger, and the right tackle, Stevenson. Stevenson's a first-year, first true freshman, starting in Alabama since uh, Larry Rose did it way back in 1985. Saran Stacy passing up the NFL draft to return for his senior season here at Alabama, said that it was very important to him to do it the right way, to come back and get his degree. He promised his mother that he would. Second and nine. Woodson completes it to Stacy. And he's down close to the 35. Yeah, he came back, Stacy did. I think he also wanted to prove to the NFL that knee is sound now. Look at him just drifting out into the flat. They were working against his zone. Came down, couldn't find his feet when he came back down, but he is some kind of talent. Came into this game with 175 yards in two games. A little bit banged up. Alabama moving the ball. It's third and three. Play action, Woodson rolls. And he's caught from behind by number 42, Dwayne Simmons. Simmons has been everywhere on the field tonight. What a great play by Simmons. He came on the blitz. He sliced through inside the end and tackle and never gave up. Chased him all the way down. Chase Woodson at least 40 yards the other side of the field and made the tackle from behind. Tank Williamson comes into punt for Alabama. He'll try and pooch this one inside the 10. And he gets a fantastic bounce. They down it at the three. A 38-yard punt. But there's a flag on the play. Tank Williamson really laid it up there. Let his players get underneath it. Good downfield coverage on the punt by the Tide. Steve Buskey downed it. to the goal, first down. We'll be back after this. 
But second and five, Garrison Hurst on the carry this time, inches out close to a first down. Eric Zier has come into the ball game for Georgia now. He's a six foot two inch, 200 pound freshman. The guy we talked about earlier, he hails from Marietta, Georgia. He hasn't thrown any interceptions. So Greg Talley goes three series this time before coming out. Talley was unable to move the club. What a spot to bring in a 19 year old freshman though. And I mean, he just turned 19. He's a true freshman. Last year, he was the national high school player of the year. And he faces a third and three. Two tight ends in the ball game. And Zaire will be very close to the first down. It depends on the spot. Michael Rogers was there for the tackle. Eric Zaire tucked it under and got the first down. Boy, he is special. You know, most guys that young in front of a hostile crowd like this, especially an Alabama crowd, which is so knowledgeable in the game of football, I mean, most young guys don't know if the ball is pumped or stuffed. He comes in, he's very, very composed, mature, premature ball in there. Looks a little bit older than he is, but I'll tell you what, he can play this game of football. His poise belies his age. Actually played high school football in West Germany. Garrison Hurst, and he is meant. No gain on that play. That Alabama front three doing a job. Watch this. Eric Curry's the guy that's taking credit for this. We'll see if he's got there first, but here comes Hurst. Bang! Up inside, and it was not Curry. It was uh, Sullins, number nine. See 90 right there, Sullins. And Curry jumped up and said, I did it. Bang, it's me. <laughs> Second and 10. Larry Ware. Great balance. And he's out over the 23 to the 24. With Larry Ware with some tremendous balance right there. Let's go to Roger Twyville in New York in our studios for an update. and Texas and this game being played in Austin as we take a look though at Nebraska and Washington this is a uh, Derek Brown and Brown's gonna take it in 27 yards for the touchdown Nebraska leads it 7 to nothing well it's second and five now for Georgia with 857 to play in the second quarter no score Eric Zier now leading the Georgia offense. He has yet to go to Andre Hastings. And more motion up front. Flags all over the field. Zier rolls out. It looked like number 90 was offside. John Sullins for Alabama. But we'll have to wait and get the call. John Sullins right here, coming on the blitz. Came across, no question about that one, but then I didn't think there was a question about the last time they jumped, when Curry came across and they marked that off against Georgia. Sullins is one of the three team co-captains here for Alabama. Offside, defense. That's Alabama's third penalty of the ball game. Boy, he's been a starter since replacing Van Trees Davis back in 1989. Sullis, you mentioned, is a Butkus Award candidate. That's as the nation's top linebacker. That time, he just got a little too anxious. And look at those penalties. It's the best drive of the night for Georgia. And Eric Zier's leading it. Strong and where are the backs? Completes the pass to number 12, Arthur Marshall. A quick hitter by Eric Zier to Marshall. So much poise for a freshman. They brought the blitz again, and they're doing that to him because he is young. They're trying to shake him up, give him different looks. He just steps up there, three-step drop, bang! Knocks it out there and completes it. A nine-yard gain for Georgia. It's second and one. The ball at the 44. Strong gets a surge, 
That will be very close to the first down. Max Strong on the carry. He's stopped up by Robert Stewart up front. Most of the time when you go to a blitz package and you bring your linebackers, you play man defense, man-to-man -man coverage. Alabama is not the best man-to-man -man covering team. And so far, Zaire's taking a pretty good task of that. Ray Goff's upset now. Damon Evans is feeling his wrath. It's third and one. Where? He'll have the first down and almost broke away for more. He's stopped up by George T. 11 yards and the first down for Georgia. Got a very good block by Lamont Tellis, Jim. Yeah, watch Tellis, number 77, gets out of that corner, cuts things down for Ware. You know, Ware's got something to prove. He grew up in Montgomery, Alabama. He wasn't recruited by Alabama or Auburn. Auburn was even closer to his home. He was the high school player of the year, but they thought he was too small. So now he comes back to Alabama and wants to have a big night. Ware has carried the ball four times now for 32 yards. Evans in motion. Zaire lobs it up for Ware. Ware makes the catch, and that ball stayed in the air forever. You know what? The nose guard, Robert Stewart, made the hit on Zaire before he even throws this ball. Watch 34. Here he comes. Here's the contact. Now he throws it and still completes it. Never lost sight of the receiver and somehow got it out to him. Robert Stewart with a rib sandwich. Took a big bite out of Zaire, but Zaire, boy, stayed in there and completed the pass. Second and nine. Play action. Zaire's got a man wide open. Complete to Kevin Maxwell at the two-yard line. There's a flag, though, Mark. Charles Gardner brought down Maxwell, who had checked into the ball game. This is going to be against Georgia, too. They're going to bring it back. Oh, my, how that one will hurt. You know, it doesn't even matter. This is a great play. Even though they're going to call an ineligible receiver downfield, this is still a great play by Zaire. Stepped up, rolled out of the pocket. He could have run or passed. Instead, threw on the oh, run and completed it. Say now. Boy, Maxwell just lays out on this ball. It's thrown in front of him. Watch. Now he turns, gets to the open spot, balls out in front of him. Layout. Does, makes the catch at the one, but there was an ineligible receiver downfield, so they bring it back. Maxwell sat out the first two games of the season due to an injury, and he will play some today. The coaches really like him. Second and four. This is first. Tough running up the middle. He stopped at the 45-yard line. Garrison Hurst, the 5-foot, 11-inch, 195-pound softener, four with very good speed. Need just more than 10 yards now, so they need almost 11 on this play. Georgia holding on to the ball for over six minutes. Zire sacked by Antonio London. So it'll be time to punt for Georgia. When you've got a quarterback as mobile as Zire, you've got to hold your block. Lamont Tellis didn't. He made contact and lost his man, and then when Zire stepped up, he was hit. Scott Armstrong comes into punt. That's David Palmer, the freshman for Alabama. Teams have been kicking away from him. And this one goes into the end zone for a touchback. 50-yard punt, and he'll take it out to the 20. Powers meet the number one team in the country. Florida State tackles third rank Michigan next Saturday on ABC Sports. Welcome back, everyone, to Bryant Denny Stadium. 4:29 to play in the first half. Still no score in the ball game between Georgia and Alabama. A lot of top ten action today. Florida State and Miami and Michigan not playing. 
Nebraska leads. Oh, what a day in college football. The Florida lost to Syracuse. Tennessee just barely got by Mississippi State. Texas A&M lost. Houston lost. And Southern Cal lost. Wishbone Magic down in Oklahoma as well. What about Mississippi State, though, Tim? Making a lot of noise here in the SEC with Jackie Sherrill. I wasn't sure they were for real until I saw them today against Tennessee and Knoxville. You do that. Tennessee was lucky to get out of there with a win. They won it at the end. I'll tell you, Jackie Sherrill's got a fine football team. Danny Woodson still in at quarterback for Alabama. First and 10 at the 20. Kevin Turner does a little hand walk to get a gain of about one yard. Stopped by Greg Jackson. Second and 10, the ball on the 20. David Palmer is in the ball game. Donnie Finkley is the split end. Woodson, play action. Drops the ball. Georgia could have had it, but it looked like Alabama had it, got it back. Let's go back to Roger Twybell in New York with some more scores and an update. Mark, we uh, promised you Texas Auburn. We're going to give it to you from Austin, Texas. The Longhorns trailing 14 to nothing. Jimmy Saxton has replaced Peter Gardier, and he runs the option to perfection. Tiptoes down the sideline, gets the touchdown. Texas trails by seven. Meanwhile, LSU and Vanderbilt, Vandy leading in the second quarter. Let's go back to Mark. Early home, and it's third and 15 for Alabama. Complete over the middle. Woodson really rifled it in there for Kevin Lee. 18 yards and a first down. Danny Woodson looked very authoritative throwing that ball. George is in a zone defense, so if you've got a receiver that can get into the open seams, watch this. Plenty of time for Woodson, and he just drills it and hit Kevin Lee. Of course, Lee, watch him now. Number 37 coming across the middle post, goes up and makes the catch. He's remembered for that 61-yard return he had against Auburn last year. Track star, runs the 100 meters in 10-6. But a speed, first and 10 for Alabama. The reverse to Lee. And he's got some room. He's got one man to beat. Kevin Lee takes it down to the 17-yard line. A 48-yard gain. Chris Wilson made the stop. Just one of two defenders left for Georgia before the touchdown. They're going to call this against Saran Stacy, I believe. See if there's not a late clip. They'll mark this off against Alabama. Boy, Gene Stallings has to be shaking his head. Well, how about this now? We just talked about Lee and his speed. Now watch the right side of your screen. See Saran Stacy 27, the push in the back. He can't do that. That's just a lack of discipline. Saran knows better than that. You can't do that. A senior as well. First and 10. Woodson is sacked back at the 50-yard line. Damon Ward made the tackle. Gene Stallings wondering what he has to do to eliminate those penalties. We'll be back. Welcome back, everyone, to score 0 0 204 to play at Bryant Denny Stadium and Monday night. Hey, what about those Chicago Bears? Undefeated so far. They take on the New York Jets, who played very well against Buffalo the other day. I was a guest on Chet Kopik's radio show in Chicago this past week. Folks calling in, you'd think the Bears have already won the Super Bowl. They beat the Giants last week. Those fans think that this Bears team is as good as any they've ever had. It all starts at 9 o'clock Eastern time on ABC. They're getting giddy in Chicago already. Nothing giddy about this game so far. Second and 22 for Alabama. Woodson completes the pass of the 28 to Saran Stacy. 
Great mobility by Danny Woodson, 21 yards on the play. Really fought off a nice tackle, Tim. Boy, he sure did. I mean, the pressure came backside. He got away from it, still threw on the run, and Stacy just laid out and made the catch. One thing that Georgia's got to do is mix their defenses up a little bit, more, be more aggressive in the secondary. They're playing a lot of zone. Still third down and one to go. At the conclusion of tonight's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet MVP of the game from each team. And for the 21st year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. Well, nothing on the scoreboard yet. We have 1.33 to play before halftime. Danny Woodson, just before we left, eluded a tackler and completed a pass to Saran Stacy. Coming up at halftime, the Prudential Halftime Report. Roger and Bo Schembechler are back in our studios, and he'll be speaking with Florida State head coach Bobby Bowden about the pressure of being number one and their upcoming showdown against Michigan. Look at Big Al. Big Al wants some points before half. This guy's playing well, Danny Woodson, the quarterback. Six for seven. Third and one. Stacy. He'll be close to that first down. The stop by who else? Dwayne Simmons, the inside linebacker for Georgia. Saran Stacy not only running the ball well tonight, but showcasing his skills as a receiver. First down. You know, Saran Stacy, for a guy who could win the Heisman Trophy, he rides a bike around campus here, Tim. Whistles on the play and flags. And another penalty against Alabama. Well, Stacy has a good year. He could move into the top five. Bobby Humphrey, the Denver Bronco, who is not signed right now, is the leading rusher. Stacy's closing in on Major Ogilvy, too, as the 10th best runner ever at Alabama. Bobby Humphrey, what a story he is. Two years to go on his contract out in Denver. Looks like the Broncos are going to trade him. He's still holding out. First and 15. Oh, what a hit. Donnie Finkley had his bell rung over the middle, and he's down on the field. Mike Jones, number nine, came and really laid the lumber to him. I mean, shook his feelings. Mike Jones is the brother of Sean Jones, the quarterback at Georgia Tech. Watch this. Here he comes, number nine. Oh, puts his hat right in there. That'll put your eyeballs back in your forehead. Oh. You know what they say about Mike Jones? They say his untapped potential. You know, he's had some legal problems and, and was suspended for a game, but he's playing again, and they say potentially he's better than his brother, the Heisman Trophy candidate, Sean Jones, the quarterback at Georgia Tech. Finkley is up now, being attended to by the team physicians. You know, Finkley is one of the receivers here, nicknamed the Poison Clan for Alabama. Prince Wembley gave the team, the receivers, that nickname. Why is that? Well, we're still trying to figure that out. Not much venom or poison in the offensive attack so far for Alabama. Prince Wembley wears that hat with a P on it, calls himself Cool P. Cool. Second and 15. Cool P is playing with some pain tonight. Has a sore collarbone, injured that in practice this week, and he's also coming back from a knee injury. Hooked that against Georgia last year. Alabama with one timeout remaining, and a flag on the play, which pretty much symbolizes the way this game has gone so far. Dead ball. Stallings is furious, and well he should be. 1 thing he wanted to eliminate in this game, mistakes. And this team is making a ton of mental errors, and he's furious. He told us about the inexperience of his offensive line. Second and 20. To set up the screen to Stacy. Breaks a couple of tackles down by the 30 yard line. Saran Stacy with some tough running 
and good receiving tonight. Time continues to move, though, 25 seconds. They've got to utilize the clock better. Stallings trying to get him up to the line of scrimmage. Woodson takes it himself. He's down to the 23 with eight seconds to play. And the clock stops. Dwayne Simmons on the tackle. And Matt Wethington will come in now for the field goal attempt. Alabama takes a timeout. Eight seconds remain on the clock. They didn't use that clock as well as they should have. They could have gotten an extra play out of it. Or maybe even moved the ball into the middle of the field. See, that's what Gene's talking to Danny Woodson about. He says, Danny, you got to think about the, the clock. you got to be a curator of clocks out there. Control that thing. Get those other ten guys up to the line of scrimmage. Run a clock play or at least an audible. So Matt Wethington will come in for a 42-yard field goal attempt. His first one was partially blocked. Now, they've had a lot of success here. The Tide has at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Look at that, that record. 153 wins. They've won nine of the last ten night games here at Bryant-Denny. Misses it. He goes 0 for 2. And this half will end with zeros on the scoreboard. We'll return with halftime activities after this message and a word from our ABC stations. It's 0 0. ABC's College Football. Brought to you by Chevy Trucks. More people are winning with the heartbeat of America. And by AT&T, the right choice. The Prudential Halftime Report. Brought to you by the Prudential. Come to the companies of the Prudential and build your future on the rock. Reporting from New York, Roger Twibel and Bo Schembechler. And welcome to our ABC studios in New York. Georgia and Alabama, of course, taking place. Southeastern Conference game at Bryan-Denny Stadium. Hope you enjoyed the first half, even though there wasn't any score. You remember last year, the Dogs won on a field goal with about a minute and a half to go. This one, the best play of the half, will tell you, was this 48-yard run by Kevin Lee of the Tide. Watch him go. But unfortunately, this was kind of the tone for the first half. Ten penalties by the two teams in the first half. A clipping penalty against Suron Stacy nullified the game, and it's tied at halftime. No score. And, uh, Bo, last week, of course, Alabama shut out by Florida. This is getting to be a bad habit, not scoring here. Six straight quarters without scoring. This is a defensive battle. Roger, whoever scores first in the second half will win. Big game going on out at Lincoln, Nebraska, Washington, and of course the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. This at Memorial Stadium. Uh, the Huskers haven't beaten a top 10 team since 88. Of course, Washington ranked fourth. First quarter, Derek Brown of the Cornhuskers. Watch him go 27 yards. You know, against Stanford, Washington only gave up 28 yards rushing. They get 27 on that one. That made it 7 to nothing. Big hole there for Derek Brown. But in the second quarter, this will cap a 98-yard drive. Quarterback draw Billy Joe Holbert from nine yards out. They missed the point after. And right now, Nebraska leads Washington 7-6. to six. That's a good ball game out there in Lincoln, Bo. That's a great game. I hate to miss an extra point in a big game and trail by one because that could be a deciding factor. Another game going on tonight is at Penn State where BYU has struggled this year. They've got a tough schedule, and Ty Detmer, since winning the Heisman Trophy, hasn't won a game. Second quarter, Tony Sack has been battling some injuries, finds Terry Smith, terrific catch. 12-yard score gave the Nittany Lions a 10-0 lead. Now, still in the second, watch Detmer here find Bryce Doman. 17 yards for the touchdown. Detmer passes Doug Flutie as the all-time total offense leader in NCAA history, but unfortunately, Doman broke his clavicle in his shoulder there, and, of course, he's going to be out the rest that game 10-7 right now. Now, Detmer, has he had a bad year, or are there some other problems there with the BYU team? Well, uh, the one thing we have to take into consideration, the last four or five games they've played have all been against great football teams. 
So uh, even though Brigham Young has lost them, uh, let's face it, they played some tough competition. And he's only had one returning starter on his offensive line, and any good quarterback has got a good <laughs> offensive line. That's been a problem of some sorts. At Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas, Auburn out of the Southeastern Conference taking on the Longhorns of Texas. Texas has lost four of the last five home openers. Right now, Auburn leads this thing at halftime 14-7. to Missouri and Baylor. Looks like Baylor's pretty good ball club this year, 21 to nothing. This game in the second quarter, uh, there have been three running touchdowns for Baylor in that game so far. Ole Miss playing their home opener after three straight on the road. They've gotten it easy so far against Ohio. It is now in the fourth quarter. Marvin Courtney, three touchdown runs, 31-7. The Rebels lead that one. Vanderbilt at LSU, and what is the trouble with LSU at halftime? Vandy. Leads it 7-3. to three. Of course, uh, LSU has lost their first two games. This game, of course, in Baton Rouge. And then Arkansas State and Memphis State. After beating Southern Cal, Memphis State has lost two straight. But Arkansas straight, State has lost their first three, 14-7. That game is in the second quarter. We're going to bring you more scores on our ABC Sports Board. And welcome to the Prudential Halftime Report. Along with Bo Schambeckler, I'm Roger Twibel. This has been a Saturday of upsets in college football. There have been more than one. And let's begin at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. The Orangemen playing host to the fifth-ranked Gators of the University of Florida. And what a great start. The opening kickoff, Terry Richardson gives the ball to Kirby Dardar. And the young man from Tampa will go all the way 95 yards for the touchdown. That gave the Orangemen a 7-0 lead. The tone was set for the game. They go on to win it. 38-21, Marvin Gray. 13 of 16, 162 yards and two touchdowns, 38-21 the final. Then, maybe the biggest upset of the day occurred at Skelly Stadium in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Chris Hewley had a big day. He rushed for 231 yards and three touchdowns. But this in the fourth quarter, T.J. Rubley to Chris Penn with less than three minutes to go. 63 yards for the TD, and that would give them the 35-34 lead. And Tulsa would hold on to edge Texas A&M by one. Tulsa moves to 3-1 and one on the young season. Houston at Illinois. And of course, the Cougars trying to atone for that terrible loss to Miami at the Orange Bowl last week. They didn't get any help at all from Illinois, who jumped right on them. This in the third quarter. And Jason Produsco up top for the third time to Gus Palma. Three touchdown connections between those two players. 51-10, the final in that game at Champaign. And let's take a look at the two quarterbacks and how they matched up in this game. Klingler, of course, from Houston. Produsco from Illinois. And you see the difference there. Three touchdown passes, no interceptions for the Illinois QB. Klingler, on the other hand, one touchdown and four interceptions. And to be very honest, the Illinois defense drops several other opportunities. In the Pac-10, Arizona State at Southern Cal. The Trojans ranked 22nd after beating Penn State last week. This day, Arizona State had the running game going. And this is sophomore George Montgomery. It's only fitting he'd have a big day near Hollywood. 43 yards for the touchdown in the second quarter. That gave the Sun Devils an 18-3 lead. He had 136 yards and 26 carries for two touchdowns. And, Bo, can you, can you get over all these upsets today? What's going on in college football? It's really exciting. Yeah. But you take uh, Syracuse, 250 yards rushing to minus 17 for Florida. Uh, possession time with Syracuse. You go to... Um, uh, Houston turning the ball over five times, a suspect defense, and Illinois playing great football. You go to the West Coast and you see uh, where uh, Southern Cal turns the ball over four times, once inside the five when they're ready to score, and they get beat by seven points. So um, I think these things are going to happen when two teams that are fairly evenly matched uh, play each other on a Saturday afternoon. We had another near upset in Knoxville, Tennessee. Mississippi State had won their first three games under Jackie Sherrill. They're playing their first road game, but Tennessee pulls it out, and Andy Kelly touchdown pass in the closing moments, 26-24 the final on that one. Washington State and Ohio State, and the Buckeyes now have moved to 3-0. and They win it 33-19. to And Michigan State and Notre Dame, and this day was all Rick Meyer, 651 yards of total offense for the Irish. They win it 49-10 to in South Bend. Three of the top ten teams, of course, the top three teams were idle. Of course, that's talking about Florida State, Miami, and of course the University of Michigan. And next Saturday here on ABC Sports at 12 noon Eastern time, you can see Florida State and Michigan. And earlier, I had a chance to talk to Florida State head coach Bobby Bowden about that game next week. 
Well, Bobby, thanks so much for joining us. You've had a week off uh, to get ready for the University of Michigan. Your two previous games, though, were rather easy victories over Tulane and Western Michigan. Is that going to be a problem for your guys at all as they go into this big game next Saturday? I don't ho I hope not. You know, you'd like to have a, a tougher ball game where you could test yourself a little bit more, but I, I really think it's, I, mean, I think it's enough. You know, the tough one comes Saturday. Talk about Casey Weldon, your quarterback. He's, he's quite versatile. He can throw it and he can even put it under his arm and run with it when need be. Yeah, if, you know, if we, if we wanted to run a wishbone or an option game here, he'd be great at it. But yeah, I don't get enough like him that can throw like him. And uh, so if he runs, it'll be because somebody's chasing him. You know, we're not going to set up anything for him. Well, he's a heck of an athlete. I'm sure he's going to cause the Michigan coaches some concern, but I'm sure causing concern for your coaching staff is Desmond Howard. How do you stop that guy? Boy, I, I, there's, well, there's one that can nail you about as quick as anybody in the country yeah. because their, their offense just fits him so good. You know, their ball control, ball control, ball control, and you start, you start creeping up there to try to stop it, and that guy, one-on-one, -on -one, you, can't, you can't stop him. What would you do with him if you had him in your offense? Oh, I'd run him to death on reverse. <laughs> I'd, have his, I'd have his tongue hanging out by the half. <laughs> but, I mean, this is the second game against Michigan. You played him back in 86. It was a close game 2018. It's interesting. I talked to Florida State people, and they say they got jobbed by the officials from the Big Ten. I talked to Michigan officials. They said, well, those guys that Bowden brought with him weren't very good either. You, you concerned about this dur during this uh, game next week? No, uh, no, I'm not. Uh, Seminoles say we got jobbed, okay? That, that's their job to say we got jobbed. <laughs> you know, we always, we always think the other guy jobbed us. No, I'm, I'm expecting an excellently officiated ball game. But I know you'd like at some point in time to maybe have a Michigan come down to your place and play you, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, heck. I, really, I, would, I wanted to play them at about 95 degrees temperature. You know, those 340-pound guys, let them sweat a little bit <laughs> instead of up there. Okay, Bobby, thanks so much. Best of luck to you next week. We'll look forward to that game. Thank you, Roger. Well, Paul, why didn't you ever go down to Tallahassee? I have no interest in Tallahassee <laughs> early in uh, September. Uh, if they want to play uh, Michigan, they got to do it in Ann Arbor. <laughs> I'm sure Bobby Bowden's going to have a couple of tricks up his sleeve. He's got to be tough to prepare for. Well, there's no question about it. They've got a great football team, and that's going to be a great game. I'm surprised you brought up the officiating of the last game. <laughs> I wonder who told me about that anyway. <laughs> We're going to have more scores for you now on the ABC Sports Board. Note ABC Sports heads to Soldier Field Monday night as the undefeated Chicago Bears play host to the New York Jets. The city of Chicago will sparkle at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. And, Bo, we're about a month into the college football season. It looks like we're seeing more option offense this year than we've seen in the past. I think that's true. You take uh, Meyer at Notre Dame, uh, take uh, Graves at Syracuse, Hagen at Colorado. Uh, a lot of your big teams have quarterbacks that have the ability to pass, but they can run too. And that extra dimension of an option play along with the ability to pass and passing off the option fakes makes them doubly uh, difficult to defend. Now we'll keep following that as the season goes on. And we want to thank you for being with us on the Prudential Halftime Report. Now enjoy the second half of the game you're watching. Prudential Halftime Report has been brought to you by the Prudential. Come to the companies of the Prudential and build your future on the rock. Well, you're looking at the Alabama Million Dollar Band, playing like a million bucks right now, but their football squad not moving the ball that well and failing to put any points on the board. It is 0-0 at halftime, Alabama and Georgia. A look at the stats shows that, as I mentioned, they are moving the ball fairly well. They have 166 yards, but no points to show for it. Turnovers and untimely penalties have hampered both offenses so far in the game. We'll be back with the second half kickoff in just a minute. ABC's College Football. Brought to you by Honda, maker of fine quality automobiles. Test drive a Honda at your local dealer today. And by UPS, now offering 10.30 a.m. guaranteed overnight air delivery. Welcome back to Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Georgia, and Alabama deadlock at zeros. 
We're about to kick it off for the beginning of the third quarter. And Tim, so far, as I mentioned, Alabama's moved the ball, so what do you do in the second half? No points to show for it. Let me re-emphasize what you said. Bama drove into Georgia territory three times. They fumbled at the 27 and missed a 32-yard field goal, missed a 42-yard field goal. Perhaps the biggest was right there at the end of the first half. They had first down and 10 at the Georgia 27 with a minute to go. Two consecutive penalties moved them out of field goal range. And it's the first scoreless uh, nothing, nothing half for Alabama since the mid-80s. First time it's happened to Georgia since 1979 against Clemson. David Palmer and Chris Anderson are back deep for the time. This is Anderson. And he'll take the touchback. Alabama will start things off from the 20-yard line. Danny Woodson will be the quarterback here in the third quarter. Woodson has played fairly well so far. He's moved the team. Seven of nine passing for 82 yards. And Saran Stacy showcasing his receiving skills, coming out of the backfield, catching the ball four times. Stacy and Kevin Turner are the backs. They're the pro set right now. Steve Buskey is the tight end. This is Stacy. Stacy didn't seem to really explode right there, Tim. He's stopped up by Carlo Butler. Dwayne Simmons, the leading tackler for the George defense. He was their leading tackler coming into this game with 17. Saran Stacy still trying to regain that form of two years ago. And Nebraska leads Washington. Nebraska trying to prove their critics wrong. Kevin Turner met a big Georgia defensive surge over the right side. Yeah, and it was Kirk Douglas, the defensive tackle, best defensive lineman they have at Georgia. Certainly one of the strongest players on that defense. Just fought off the blocker and just stood Saran straight up. Outstanding play by the defensive tackle, Douglas. So it's third and nine for Alabama. This is their first series of the third quarter. An inside shovel pass. The ball goes on the ground. Stacy recovers it, and no, there's a flag on the play. That's an incompleted pass. Incompleted pass. It's harmless. we got to see what the flag is, though. That old shuffle pass was made famous by Lee Grosscup. The Utah pass. It worked earlier in the game. Ineligible punching on the offense. Lost it down. Five yards. Fourth down. And another look at it, Tim. You would think this would be the safest play in football right here. That's an incompleted pass. But again, a penalty against... Alabama for illegal touching and moves them back again. They hurt themselves. So into punt is Tank Williamson. Back deep, Chuck Carswell. Carswell has run one back already this year in the first game of the season against Western Carolina. That one going for 71 yards. And he'll get a crack at this one. A low driving kick. He gets it at the 48. And Carswell loses a few yards on the return. 32-yard punt, minus six yards on the return. Still zeros. National Powers beat the number one team in the country. Florida State tackles third rank Michigan next Saturday on ABC Sports. The best is here. Well, Georgia coach Ray Goff comes back with Eric Zier to begin the third quarter of play for the Bulldogs, and he moved the team a little bit, and I mean a little bit in the second quarter. Well, he did. He certainly moved it better than uh, Greg Talley did early on, but Georgia's only attempted five passes. They threw over 40 times against LSU. I think we're going to see more motion, more misdirection, and some play action off the schemes they ran in the first half. This is Ware. Runs to the left side. And has a gain of about two yards before being stopped by Eric Curry and John Copeland. Curry's a six foot six inch, 265 pound junior. He was a prop 48 guy when he first came in, but he will graduate on time this spring. Bit of a success story at Georgia, at Alabama, pardon me. Second and eight. Zaire in 
trouble, dumps it off to Shannon Mitchell. Zaire got rid of that ball more in fear than anything else. No, but he never loses his composure. He is so impressive. They were closing down on him. Watch this now. They come with a little blitz. Now here comes Webb outside. He's got him. He's got the contain. And all of a sudden, Zaire just steps up and throws underneath to Shannon Mitchell. Mitchell calls himself Showtime, Mr. Football in the state of Tennessee. A nine-yard gain and a first down. the ball over the 45 down to the 43 yard line boy robert stewart that's the matchup we've been watching the nose guard number 34 watching he goes up against tellus and the floor and tellus just takes him down and pancakes him boy i'll tell you something 6'4 268 pounds he is a gifted athlete i'm talking about tellus stewart is as well but tellus got the best of that one second and six Zaire hits Frank Harvey. Rolls out nicely to complete the pass. <laughs> Got to tell you something. Every time I see Zaire, I can't believe how poised he is. He is such a talent. Last year's high school player of the year. I'm talking about nationally. Finished his last semester of high school at the University of Georgia. Actually practiced with the team in the spring. He got that early admissions waiver for the NCAA because he was in the top 10% of his high school with a 3-5 average. Very smart individual. Ball on the 28-yard line now for Georgia. Harvey. Nothing doing. Antonio London, the left linebacker, making the stop. London, a 6-foot, 2-inch, 220-pound junior. Coach Ray Goff, former quarterback, way back in 1975. Finished seventh in the Heisman ballot. Led his team to an SEC title. It's second and 11. Zyre completes it to Larry Ware. Where? Deep inside Alabama territory to the eight-yard line. 22 yards and a pass and catch before Charles Gardner made the stop. So Eric Zire is igniting this Georgia offense. This has definitely been one of the keys, the way they've handled the nose guard, Robert Stewart. May have gotten away with holding that time, but look, they cleared out that entire side, dragged their tight end across the middle, took everybody out. And then they just came back to the weak side with Ware. First and goal from the eight. Almost intercepted. The pass attempt going to Kevin Maxwell was broken up by George T. You know, that's the first pass he's missed tonight. He was five for five before that one, 53 yards. Boy, look at this. Year by year, more yards per game through the air under Ray Goff. Now they got Wayne McDuffie, the new offensive coordinator, brought that Florida State type attack. And they're poised and ready to strike right now. Second and eight, second and goal. Where? Close to the five. They ran the toss to the right side before being stopped up by John Sullins. Sullins now, drift, planted inside out just like he's got to, tuck that tail, scout the eyes, and drive, put him on his back. Inside out, played it just like he should. Third and goal at the five-yard line. Play action. There's a fumble. And Alabama has the ball. He can't advance it. He can't advance it. Bring it back. John Copeland and Steve Webb made the stop and the sack on Eric Zire. And the Alabama defense comes up with a huge play deep in their own territory. 
Boy, all the praise that we've given Eric Zier on this drive. He just made a freshman mistake. Drops back. Here comes Webb. Instead of tucking it away right here, he leaves it out. Old John Copeland, 94, just stripped it. Georgia self-destructs deep in Alabama territory. The first serious scoring threat of the ball game. You know, we saw Eric Zier two weeks ago against LSU, and although he played a sensational ball game, one thing he didn't learn then, he hadn't learned yet. Don't take that sack down low like that. Either throw it away, or if you are going to get sacked, tuck it away. Kevin Turner. Tough running, close to the first down. Kevin Turner sidestepping, tiptoeing his way out to the 30-yard line almost. As I mentioned, Turner is a Dope Walker nominee. The feel in this stadium is not one of a scoreless ball game. I mean, it's electric in here. It's exciting. Best 0-0 half I've seen. <laughs> Danny Woodson still in control for Alabama. Second and one. Stacy will be close to the first down. We'll have to look at the spot. John Allen came up and stopped him on the play. Alabama's looking at third and one. are in the eye. Stacy is the deep back. He gets the toss. And I don't think he made the first down. No, he should have it up for the first. Should have it up. His forward progress, I think, Mark, took him up near the 30. That should be enough. It is. He did get it. Chuck Carswell was very excited. He came up for the Bulldogs, made the stop on the play, really read the play. But not before Saran Stacy gained the first down. Yeah, see, when that defensive guy comes up and says they didn't make it, don't believe those no <laughs> defensive guys. They're just trying to influence the officials. He had plenty. First and ten for Alabama. The ball on the 30-yard line. Play action. Woodson goes to the sidelines, completes it. To number 83, Steve Buskey. That's Buskey's first catch of the evening. Well, tomorrow night, Premier Week continues on ABC with the all-new season premieres of Life Goes On, America's Funniest Home Video, and America's Funniest People, plus a world premiere movie event, the untold story of Marilyn Monroe's first husband, Marilyn and me, tomorrow night on ABC. Second and five. Stacy stopped up by John Allen. You know, Stacy, before that carry, had 10 carries for 13 yards. Largely ineffective so far tonight running the ball, but as a pass receiver, he's done well. He gained one on that play. Boy, they started young down here, Tim. <laughs> Corn fed hands banks. Raise him right here in Tuscaloosa. Third and four. Woodson incomplete. That pass attempt was from Prince Wimbley. But he threw it a little low. Wimbley couldn't get down in time to make the catch. So Alabama will have to punt the ball away. Almost made that catch. Tried to scoop it and get his hands under it. So Cool P couldn't make it. Chuck Carswell takes the punt. And he busts it up the middle. Carswell takes it down to the 41-yard line. A 40-yard punt and a 35-yard return. Martin Houston almost made a touchdown saving tackle. While you're looking at the President's Mansion here on the campus of the University of Alabama, you know, during the Civil War, the North was about to burn down the President's house, but the President's wife came out and pleaded with the Army from the North, and they moved on and left the structure standing. It was recently renovated. 
burnt down just about everything else on this campus, though. <laughs> that mansion was one of the few things left standing. On the sidelines there, tight end Steve Buskey for the University of Alabama, who was shaken up on that punt return by Chuck Carswell. It's first and 10 for Georgia from the 42-yard line. Hastings in motion. Harrison Hurst takes it over the 40-yard line down to the 39. You know, in the first half, it was Alabama that moved the ball effectively, had three opportunities to score, never did capitalize. Now, in this half, it's been Georgia which has been penetrating. As a matter of fact, the last drive, the Dogs had third goal at the five. That's when Zaire was sacked and fumbled at the 20. Second and seven. some room. Garrison Hurst with a nice run over the right side. A big surge on the right side by the Georgia offensive line. 24 yards on that carry. And Georgia inches closer to the goal line again. You know what Zyre's been doing? He's been letting the defense see the football. Look at this. Boom. Just put it out there. Let it, let it go. Had a little trap up front. Opened up the middle. He took it right through and made a big gainer out of it. See that 4-3 speed. We'll see if Eric Zyre can remain a little more poised now down deep in Alabama territory. Hurst was stopped at the 10-yard line that time. Sullins in on yet another tackle for the tie. Sullins been very busy tonight on the Alabama defense. Second and ten. Max Strong takes it to the eight-yard line. Tough sledding in the middle there. Alabama was coming with the blitz. They were bringing the safety. And he came right through the gap where the ball carrier was going. Stacy Harrison and John Sullins in on the stop. Stacy Harrison calls himself the hitmeister. He was coming on the blitz, ran right into the ball carrier. Well, they need a stop meister right here. It's third and eight. Garrison Hurst. He'll be short of the first down. And Ray Goff does not even hesitate. He sends in Todd Peterson to attempt a field goal. Yeah, see, here's a major difference. Ray Goff knows he's got a guy that can bang it through. And, of course, last year this game was decided on a last-second field goal. Peterson's only 3 for 7, though. He struggled, but he's got a pretty good leg. This one will come from 24 yards out. Do you believe this? No, I don't. He missed. Georgia turned away again. Ray Goff shaking his head on the sidelines was looking at a sure thing, so he fought. one to go in the third quarter. Hard to believe we've had a couple missed field goals for Alabama. Now here comes Georgia. Peterson bangs up. I'm not so sure. That one wasn't tipped in the middle. Looked like somebody got a hand on it. Still had enough distance. Just went wide. Remember now, one of the new things they did this year in college football was close down those uprights. They squeezed them together almost five more feet than they were last year. First and 10 from the 20-yard line for Alabama. Kevin Turner gains two and a bit. I tell you, Tim, it is a man's world tonight running that football. Nothing but. Well, the rules of the game thus far have been simple. Straight ahead, no fair dodge. And both offenses, I think, have remained fairly basic. Some of the blown opportunities by both squads so far. Three missed field goals, all from relatively close range. Second and seven 
for Danny Woodson in Alabama. A pass tip but complete to Prince Wembley. Wembley out close to the first down. Cool P making his first reception of the evening. Charles Bledger as a freshman was guarding that time, was covering him. Was really playing soft. He was off about 10 yards, so it was just a little three-step, turn around and catch the pass. It's third and one. Wembley's out wide. Stacy with the first down. Well, this game resembling very much a black and blue division game featuring the Chicago Bears. We'll have one this Monday. Chicago takes on the New York Jets, 9 o'clock Eastern time. Iron Mike and his guys looking pretty tough this year. They sure are. That was a big win against the Giants. Jets almost pulled one off against the Bills. Saran Stacy is the deep back. Woodson looking for a receiver. He completes it to Ricky Brown. Did you see what Woodson did that time? Woodson looked to the right. It was coverage. He looked to the left. It was secondary to Wembley. He was covered. Finally went outside to Brown, his third receiver. It showed a lot of poise that time. Certainly had enough time. Look at him. Looks right. Looks at his second receiver. Now finally will go all the way to the outside to his third guy, and that's Brown. Woodson throwing the ball well. He's coming off an elbow injury last week against Florida. Play action. And David Palmer makes the reception at the 35. That's the man they want to integrate in this Alabama offense. The freshman, all 5'9", climbing the ladder, going up in the air, and coming down with the ball. He's stopped by George Wynn. They call him a do-everything type player. He was the high school player of the year in the state of Alabama last year. He played quarterback, tailback, wide receiver, kick returns. Listen to this. He ran for over 2,000 yards, 26 touchdowns, passed for 1,300, and another 16 touchdowns. And Gene Stallings just loves his big play potential. First and ten. Stacy. Saran Stacy takes it down to the 15 before being brought down by Mike Jones. 19 yards on the carry. If that knee's bothered him, you can never tell by this run. See the cut there? Looks like Crazy Legs Hirsch. Finally gets into the secondary, tries to split the safeties, and they make the stop, but it's a first down Bama. The longest run of the day for Saran Stacy. First and 10 from the 16. What a juke. What a move at the line of scrimmage by Saran Stacy. Jones again on the tackle. Watch this. Steps up behind Barger. Gets a lead block. Looks for help and now kicks it outside. Now the containment was broken down. There was no flood control. He kicked it outside and almost took it the distance. The ball is just inside the five. First and goal. Stacy, he'll score. Tim could have jogged him. Craig Jackson and Donnie Mabe got caught inside. Jackson's the outside linebacker, 54. When he got sucked in, Stacy took it outside. Again, no containment to that side. He was home free. Boy, you've got to keep somebody out there, force everything back. Where the pursuit's coming. Saran Stacy had 17 touchdowns two years ago before sitting out last year because of an injury. And speaking of injuries, the injured player for Georgia there is George Brewer. Alabama 
taking it from their own 20 and marching it down the field. And this time they dodged the turnover bullet as well. Take another look at the touchdown. You look at the left hand of your screen, you see all the white jerseys getting caught inside. 54, did you see them? Greg Jackson got a great block down from the wide receiver. It left the outside wide open. There's another look at Brewer being helped off the field. Favoring his left leg. Boy, Jackson's hot. That's the worst thing you want as an outside guy. You never want to be caught. Well, place kicks are an adventure tonight. We'll have a look at this one. Ham Green came in to nail that one. So with one minute and one second to go in the third quarter, Alabama draws blood. It's seven to nothing. Tim, your thoughts on Saran Stacy after that touchdown run. Does he have the explosiveness that he displayed two years ago? Without a doubt. I saw him when he made his, his uh, coming out against Tennessee two years ago. He scored four touchdowns in that game. I'm seeing the same type of explosion tonight. He's not favoring his knee. Doesn't look like he's thinking about it. There's no psychological damage. But there is a lot of times when you come back from the injury. He is just as sharp as ever. Andre Hastings is back deep for Georgia. Arthur Marshall is the other deep man. Ham Green, who kicked the point after the touchdown, will kick it off. He's out and over the 30-yard line, 25 yards on the return. So now it'll be Eric Zier's turn to try and answer for the Bulldogs. They've been deep in Alabama territory once already in the third quarter but failed to score when Zaire fumbled the football. 55 seconds remaining in the third quarter. First and 10. Zaire goes complete to the wide side of the field to Andre Hastings. Hastings has been very quiet tonight because they put McMillan over there on him. Now he just comes up, watch the hands here, takes this one right off the turf. That's his first catch of the night. He came in with nine catches, averaging 16 yards per catch, but they've shut him down. Second and five, ball in the 35-yard line. Where? Larry Ware takes it down to the 41-yard line. And you know what? If he wasn't tripped up, he might have gone further. They're going to bring it back for holding against Georgia. Mark McMillan made the tackle for Alabama. But it'll all be for naught. Had six penalties for 42 yards against Georgia. That one especially is going to sting. Eric Zier getting the signals from head coach Ray Goff. Ray Goff very careful about his handling of his freshman quarterback. Well, that's the end of the third quarter. It's 7-0. 
Alabama leads. We'll return with more action between Georgia and Alabama after this message and a word from our ABC station. Quarterback Eric Zier has been tabbed as the next great Georgia quarterback, and he's getting some great advice from his head coach. Before our first football game, I called Eric and Greg together and, and, and visited with them, and I told Eric that uh, when he went in the game, I knew the fans would be all excited for him. And But I remembered back four years ago when Eric, when Greg Talley went in the game and had the same re role reversal with him and the senior that was playing at that time. And I told him that in four years, he'll probably experience the same thing with another young player, and uh, just to be prepared for anything and everything. Right now, Zyre's 6 for 7. That makes him 32 for 49, two touchdowns, no interceptions in three games of Georgia. Not bad. Larry Ware takes it up to the 29-yard line. The third quarter saw the first score of the ball game by Alabama. Michael Rogers stopped Ware. Look at the passing yardage. Alabama moving it in the air. Bit of a surprise, Tim? Well, it is. I mean, all this talk about Georgia's new offense, Gene Stallings says, hey, it's the same old stuff, very basic. Third and 12. Little movement on the right side. Zaire is sacked by Eric Curry. So Georgia will have to punt it away on 4th and 26, the fifth sack for Alabama. You know what makes this special for Eric Curry? He's from Thomasville, Georgia. He was the Georgia Player of the Year, but went to Alabama. He went to school with a lot of these guys he's playing against. Scott Armstrong kicking it away. David Palmer lets it bounce. And Georgia gets a good bounce out of it. Down to the 33. 52-yard punt. Well, join us next Saturday. ABC's College Football brings you an afternoon of action. Florida against Michigan State, number one against number three, beginning at 12 Eastern time. And after that, we'll see Georgia Tech, Clemson, Colorado Stanford, and Pittsburgh against Minnesota. We'll be out at that Colorado Stanford game. Darian Hagan. I know how Poe feels about that Michigan game, but I think Florida State's going to outquick them. and 10 for Alabama, 33. Here's Palmer on the reverse. And Stacy keeps it. Saran Stacy had me fooled. 15 yard gain. They brought David Palmer into the ball game and faked the reverse to him too. Great fake right here, just puts it on his hip, got everybody going that way, and then Stacy just takes it around the outside. He's a junior college transfer, was an All-American, criminal justice major. You know what's interesting to me, Mark, is that when we asked Gene Stallings about Saran Stacy, he says, oh, great kid, I love him. He says, but he's a little bit of a con artist. Trouble is always around the corner. And we said, well, I don't know about that. We've got a meeting with him. He never showed up for our meeting. I was deeply hurt. <laughs> <laughs> he's his own guy, I'll tell you that. Uh, probably busy with rehab. With his knee. Yep. Working on his knee. Arduously, did it all last year. Second and ten. The referee rules it complete over the middle to Curtis Brown. You know, it's funny, we were watching Curtis Brown in warm-ups this morning, or this evening, before the game started. We said, this guy really looks like a receiver. Tall, thin, glides, comes right into the zone, and that ball's on the ground. It should have been incomplete. Where's the old replay official when you need him, huh? Well, they don't have it in college football, as you know, but that ball was incomplete on the ground. To defense. He's a freshman. Watch this. Ball's gone right there on the ground. And yet he's he's pretty smart for a freshman. That's a great act. Oh boy. And now they're gonna take a penalty and then march Georgia even deeper. Some free yardage coming out of that one. Breakoff will take it. The ball will be on the Georgia 16-yard line. 12-28 to play in the fourth quarter. 
Unsportsmanlike conduct against the dogs. Stacy again. Puts his head down and crosses the 10. Saran Stacy starts to gain more yardage per carry now. They had Gene Jelks, they had Bobby Humphreys, and then when Humphreys got hurt, Saran Stacy jumped in. And against Tennessee, they said, hey, who's this guy? We're, we get a break. Humphreys isn't here. And he ran for four touchdowns. He's been running for touchdowns ever since. It's second and four. Stacy again. Down to the six. You're going to get another flag here for Georgia. If they don't watch was, out. He was running to the fence by Ralph Thompson. He was about five yards out of bounds. Watch this. Just keep going. Keep going. There's Thompson. There's Thompson. Yeah, Unless he just got Personal caught. Foul. There it is. Personal foul. Ralph Thompson took him right into the amplifiers. I don't think there's any doubt about that one. None at all. Saran Stacy has picked it up now in the second half. Yeah, he's juiced now. He wants to get his 22nd career touchdown right here. Backs are in a pro set. First and goal. Stacy stopped up for a loss of four yards by David Hargan. Brought the safety on the blitz. Watch him reload here. It's cheating up, cheating up, comes through the line untouched. And the up back, the half back, went down at his feet, took him low. Hargett just went over top of him and grabbed Stacy. Nice play by the strong safety. You know, he had a fractured his leg twice since 1989. He's finally healthy again. The Georgia coaches speak very highly of David Hargett. Label him as a big play guy back there. Second and goal at the nine now. Wilson completes it, and it's down at the Georgia two. Strong play by David Ward, the outside linebacker. Saran Stacy again with a catch, his fifth catch of the evening. Yeah, but watch number 53 in white. He saves the touchdown. That's a perfect tackle. See, you want to take him up high. Guy like Stacy, you don't want to watch his hips, you don't want to watch his legs. Watch his shoulders, take him up high, stay high, and ride him down. Stacy showing some NFL people that he can catch the ball out of the backfield. Big, big play here. Stacy stopped up inside the two. Now, if I had a kicker like Alabama, I'm telling you, I would go for it. I'd go for the touchdown, but it doesn't look like they're going to. Georgia jammed everybody up tight. Alabama had three tight ends in the ball game. Power formation. There's no question what they were going to do with it, and Georgia stuffed it. Two hard hitters, Dwayne Simmons and Mike Jones, made the tackle. They got a little bit more than a yard to go, but instead of going after it, they're going to kick the field goal. And Green from 18 yards out. No doubt. In whose mind? <laughs> so they increased the lead to 10-0. The tied lead. Conference rivals meet when Georgia Tech tries to tame the Clemson Tigers. Plus exciting regional action next Saturday on ABC Sports. The best is here. Well, Alabama kicked another field goal to increase its lead to 10 to nothing. 9.58 to play, and you see how far they took it. 66 yards, it wasn't spectacular, but it did result in a score. Hastings and Marshall, back deep for the Bulldogs. And Green will kick it off. It'll be a little short. Lands at the 12. 
That's Wilson. And Arthur Marshall make that, takes it out close to the 40-yard line. 36 yards on the return. No reason to panic. Nine minutes, 50 seconds still in the ball game. Three timeouts, all their timeouts for Georgia. And Eric Zier has 9.50 to work with. He's got to start finding Hastings, his leading receiver. He's got only one catch tonight. Frank Harvey. have been solid with the running games. That's been a pretty bad match. You know that Stallings takes his, his wide field corner, Mark McMillan, and put him on Hastings tonight. That was a big defensive switch, something that Alabama hadn't done, and he's just about shut Hastings down. Hastings is up to the right. Second and seven. A handoff to Max Strong. He's stopped by John Sullins. <laughs> Sullins' performance tonight would garner a few votes for that Butkus Award. He is one of the three team captains for Alabama. You know, his dad coached at Auburn. Then he comes to Alabama. That could break a family up. <laughs> Third and four. Georgia recovers the ball. And Zaire was shaken up on that play. He took a hit. That's a still, sack. Still tried to unload it after the blitz. And Webb had him, seeing then he tried to throw it. But he never got his arm going forward. How about Russell DeFour? Pick that ball up, try to act like a halfback. <laughs> David Palmer back to receive the punt. A high kick by Armstrong. And Palmer calls for the fair catch at the 25-yard line. Time's running out on Georgia. National Powers meet the number one team in the country. Florida State tackles third-ranked Michigan next Saturday on ABC Sports. Well, Saran Stacy, his coming out party in 1989, could have been in this game against Tennessee. He gained 317 all-purpose yards, including 75 on this shuffle pass touchdown reception. And he has diligently rehabilitated his knee, and he is reaping the rewards right now. 20 rushes, 73 yards. How about this? In the first half, Saran Stacy had 12 yards rushing. That was it. In the second half, he's got 61 yards rushing and one touchdown. A good night's work. It's first and 10. Kevin Turner and Chris Anderson are the backs now. Anderson takes the toss. And he's pushed out of bounds. By Carlo Butler at the 27. A little rough play down on the sidelines. You know who made that play, though, was little David Gargett. Came up, took on the lead blocker, and forced it, strung it out, made it go all the way to the sideline so the pursuit could fill, catch up, shut it down. Curly Hallman's team hanging on in the fourth quarter. They lead Vandy. Second and 12. Anderson. Cut back against the grain on that play. Well, to look back on what's happened so far, Stacy had that four-yard touchdown run in the third quarter. That was the first scoring play of the game. Then Hamp Green came in. They hit an 18-yard field goal that made it 10-0. Before that, there had been three missed field goals. Third and five. Tight end lines up to the left. 
Robert Turner. Stopped by Dwayne Simmons, but he pulled his way close to the 34, short of the first down. Time is becoming a factor now for Georgia. Still 6.45 remaining in the ball game. It's not panic time yet. They have all their timeouts, but they have to start thinking about the clock now. Well, last year, Georgia came back. They trailed with 12 minutes to go in the fourth quarter before John Casey came in to kick a winning field goal. Tank Williamson punting it away to Chuck Carswell. Carswell's dangerous, too. Watch this return. A high kick. And Carswell calls for the fair catch at the 33. A 33-yard punt, nothing on the return. We'll return with more action after a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to Bryant-Denny Stadium. The score, 10-0 Alabama over Georgia. 6-13 to play. Senior Greg Talley watching the entire second half from the sideline so far. Eric Zier, the freshman, is in. Tim, do you think... You may see more action before this is over. I don't think so. Now, the last two Georgia possessions were three plays and a punt, so Zaire was unable to move the club. But I think Zaire now is in the rhythm of the game. You know, he's the only one that really did move this bulldog club. Tally struggled early. So I think they're going to stick with Zaire all the way down the end. And Andre Hastings, the wideout, has been very, very silent. First and ten. Stewart had a big answer for Larry Ware. Look at the arms on Robert Stewart. You know, he bench presses over 500 pounds, squats over 700 pounds. And as big and strong as he is, he still runs a 4-6, 40. Comes through clean this time. Came in as a running back, moved outside linebacker, and out through that. Now he's a nose guard. Loss of two on the play, second and 12. Marshall on the reverse, looking to throw. And a flag is dropped on the play after the whistle. That could be a face mask. George Teague made the tackle. Face mask, defense, five yards. At the end of this, watch Arthur Mishu. Here's Marshall, number 12, and then Teague comes over and inadvertently gets it right there. But he didn't let go fast enough. And the Hankies came out. That's the eighth penalty of the ball game for Alabama. You know, Teague was the winner of the Leroy Jordan Headhunter Award. He was headhunting that time. Yep. A little too much. Had an interception last week against Florida. Yeah, but he missed five tackles last week, and he said he really wanted to come into this game and play well. Second and eight for Georgia. Working out of the shotgun now. Caught! No! Complete almost! Andre Hastings almost came up with the big grab. Boy, it went off Marshall. Hastings was there, and I did think he caught it. Watch this. First time we've seen a shotgun tonight, and it gave Zaire a little more time. Marshall came down, then drifted to the middle. Now watch this. The ball hits him hard goes straight up in the air. Now here comes Hastings from the left of your screen. Picked it off the turf and almost had it. And George T came in and wrapped up Marshall with the hit. Third and eight. A crucial series for the Georgia. Logged up and incomplete. I'm not sure Eric Zier knew who he's throwing to. Boy, they appreciate their defense down here in Tuscaloosa. That Bama secondary clamping down on the Georgia wide receivers tonight. Scott Armstrong punts to David Palmer. A lot of pressure. Palmer has a shot. But he's mobbed and tackled at the 15-yard line. 42-yard punt. 
And just three yards on the return. 4.56 to play. Alabama leads Georgia 10 to nothing. Welcome back, everybody. You know, Tim, something about the Chicago Bears and Monday nights and the month of September just seems to mix the right way. It's a great recipe for Chicago. They're undefeated so far. They take on the Jets Monday night at 9 Eastern time. Now, if Mike Dicker could just stretch that month of September about another eight weeks, he'd be fine. Danny Woodson has gone the distance from the very beginning. Alabama keeping the ball on the ground. Tarrant Lynch, the fullback, comes in. He's another one of those Alabama players coming off of knee surgery. They have four of them. Thinking begins to change now for Alabama. 4.35 remaining in the ball game. You lead by 10. You want to belt that clock. Get a couple of first downs. Don't make any mistakes. Don't turn the ball over. Is that a game face on Coach Gene Stallings or what? I bet you he lit him up at halftime. He wasn't happy. Second and seven. Martin Houston, a load at 235 pounds, runs for the first down, 20 yards. Houston was working out at the tight end position as well this week. Thought he might see some action there, but looked good as a fullback to him. Well, 235 pounds. He's a Dean's List guy, very mature guy. He's married, has a child. Look at him. Just carrying tacklers. He is a hoss and a half. <laughs> 235. And he used every pound. First and 10. This is Lynch. As we start to see the Georgia defense maybe tire a little bit now. 12 yards for Lynch on that carry. Stallings rotating his fullbacks. Well, the defense for Alabama has done its job. It held Georgia the last three possessions to three plays and out. Now the Alabama offense comes back in. They're melting that clock. They're under four minutes to go. First and ten. Houston on the carry. Let's go back to Roger in New York for an update. Thank you very much, Mark. 16-14 LSU with over a minute to go. Vanderbilt third and goal. And Corey Harris fumbles as Ricardo Washington forces it. Wayne Williams picks it off, and he takes it back 76 yards. LSU will hold on and sneak out a 16-14 victory over upset-minded Vanderbilt. And what a way for the Commodores to lose it. Let's go back to Mark. Yeah, Roger, but what a way for Curly Hallman to win it. He'll take that. That's Derek Lassick, one of the backup tailbacks. You see the red heart on his shoulder. That is for some of the members of the Georgia, the black heart, pardon me. That is for some of the members of the Georgia Athletic Administration that passed away. Lost five people out of that athletic department over the last year. Still milking the clock. Greg Harris with that carry. Gene Stallings going deep into his depth chart right now. Sitting with Gene yesterday in his office, having a soda, just talking about this ball game. And he says, you know, if Vanley's we played against Florida, we're still going to beat Georgia. I know we're going to beat Georgia. I feel that way. Just felt he had better people and a better game plan. Plus, I think he also knew his defense has allowed only two fourth quarter scores in his last seven games. I mean, they really tightened the shoelaces. And Woodson's done a credible job on offense tonight. It's third and seven. You jinxed him. Didn't fool anyone on that play. Hit him with a kiss of death. Fourth and seven. They'll punt it away. 
but they did use up some valuable time on the clock. That's Georgia's third sack of the evening. Georgia went to its robber coverage, and they brought the safety to the outside and took uh, Woodson back for that big loss. So you got 2.28 left, and we'll be back. We're back at Prime Denny Stadium. Mark Catfish Jones and Tim Brent. Yeah, Catfish. We introduced Mark to the Catfish last night. Always thought that was something up east you didn't eat. But down here they raise them in ponds. Catfish Jones, that may stick with you forever. I'm going to take some back to Connecticut with me. Tank Williamson back to punt for Alabama. Chuck Carswell, the deep man. And he gets it on the 13. Tremendous punt coverage this evening by the Crimson Tide. Charles Gardner, a backup free safety, making the tackle. And Georgia and Eric Zai will have to start deep. A lot of timeouts remaining, two, but not much time. Now and they've got 88 yards to go just to get on the board. Georgia started the second half with drives to the Alabama five, the Alabama 20. They fumbled once, missed the 24-yard field goal. I think they got demoralized after that. They run the screen to Hurst. And Hurst gets to the 18 before being brought down by George T. Going with the hurry up offense now. They better, they're under two minutes. They need 10 points. Look out, Zyre on the run, incomplete. That play was trouble from the beginning. Steve Webb pressuring Zyre. You know, this defense finished in the top six of four NCAA statistical categories last year. Seven starters are back. They just seem to get more aggressive. Struggled last week against Florida, but they played very, very well in the first half. I think just wore down in the second half to the Gators. How about Florida losing today to Syracuse? Holy mackerel. Man, what about those Boston Red Sox putting the heat on the Toronto Blue Jays? Third and four now for Georgia. Max Strong. What a, what a defensive show. This defense just gets stronger and stronger as the clock ticks away and Georgia takes a timeout. They just tighten the shoelaces. Eric Curry, six foot six inches, 265 pounds, a junior. As I mentioned earlier, Prop 48 guy that will graduate on time. You know, one streak that may be broken tonight. Alabama's defense has intercepted at least one pass in the last 10 games. They have it tonight. Next week, number one against number three, Florida State and Bobby Bowden taking on Gary Moeller and the Michigan Wolverines. Michigan coming off a big win against Notre Dame last weekend. Then you'll see more regional action on ABC. It all begins at 12 noon Eastern time. That's Craig Erickson. You see the former Miami Hurricane quarterback giving some advice to Eric Zier. We had a chance to meet with Erickson. He says that his rehabilitation is coming along well on his knee. Hopes to get back into professional football. Staying mentally into the ball game, even though he can't do it physically. There's 132 to play. Greg Goff looking very pensive on the sideline. Gets the first down. You know, it's time to bring out a gadget play, the old hook and lateral or something like that. You've got to get a big play. You need it now. You've got 125 left in the game, only one timeout left, and you're 10 points down. you got to score quickly. They don't use the shotgun. Zyre takes the snap. First in the flat, and he's met immediately by Charles Gardner. It has been a sensational night for this defense. I don't care who you're playing. Anytime you get a goose egg, put a zero on the scoreboard, you're really playing well. And they're doing it against a pretty good offensive team. 
Second down and eight. Now Georgia goes to the shotgun. Zire got whacked. And the pass is complete at the 37. But man, did Zire get hit. Arthur Marshall made the reception, a 12-yard catch. Eric Curry just unloaded on Eric Zire. Well, I don't think he was even in bounds when he caught that pass either. Unless it was his left knee. It's first and ten. Zire looks for Hastings. It's tipped. There's a flag on the play and caught it's going to by be, Damon Evans. It's going to be interference back there, but again, Zire took a heck of a lick, and he's having a tough time getting up. A lot of hitting by the defensive secondary for Alabama. Well, they're free shots. See, Zire starting to use that mobility and get out of the corner. Now, watch this. See, he rolls right. There's nobody out there to protect him. And here comes the big hit, and it looks like it was Steve Webb again. Now look at Hastings. They've been mugging him all night. Really been struggling. You see that? Team comes up. Safety hits him too early. So the pass is caught. They have a first down or close to it. And now there's 42 seconds left. Well, the two safeties, Harrison and Teague, have had a strong game for Alabama tonight. So Georgia first down. One of the things that Ray Goff has been concerned about with his young quarterback was bringing him in as a substitute rather than throwing him in in front of a hostile crowd. I think he's learned his lesson tonight. He's matured. He's got the experience. He can start anytime he wants now. Zire incomplete for number four, Kevin Maxwell. But Charles Gardner was the man there again for Alabama. Man, they're just teeing off on Eric Zire. You know, and it's fun watching the secondary right now, too, because they know their streaks on the line. They've gotten at least one pick in the last 10 games. They want to keep that alive and get an interception here. Well, you know there are some secret bets and pulls going on between them. <laughs> Eric Zire tonight is 10 of 15 for 87 yards. 31 seconds to play. defense almost continues its streak. It was broken up, intended for Garrison Hurst. If you're a defensive player, this is the kind of situation you want to be in. Look at Hurst out here. Linebackers coming, safety's coming, cornerbacks coming. They were playing a two deep, five under man coverage. It's safe. You've always got two guys deep, five under. You just lock those guys up on the receivers. It's like double coverage. When a ball is thrown, everybody just converges to the football. Well, it doesn't get any easier for Georgia after this. They hit the road, and they have another road game. And now they call timeout with 24 ticks to go. mentioning Georgia with the tough schedule coming up. Well, the big one's going to be that Clemson game. That's an interstate rival. Look at Florida on November the 9th. Florida losing today up in Syracuse. That's a tough way to end the season. You go Florida, Auburn, and Georgia Tech. One thing is for sure. This Georgia club finished four and seven last year. Three of those wins, well, Georgia almost lost them. And I think Ray Goff had players hurt. They were academically dismissed, so he had some problems. But he's got them back now. Played 25 true freshmen over the last two years, and that was his burden, but now it's starting to pay off. Well, unlike 1990, there will be no comeback magic for the Georgia Bulldogs, barring a miracle, of course, here with 24 seconds to go. They're ruling it an incomplete pass now. John Copeland 
left defensive end. Transfer from Hans Junior College. He had a clean shot at Zaire. Zaire raises his arm. Here comes Copeland. Sixteen seconds left. That makes it fourth and ten. Zaire can't wait to get in the shower right now. Three receivers out to the left for Georgia. But they won't even catch the ball. Eric Curry living in the backfield. Living large. This is bordering on child abuse. <laughs> the seventh sack for the Bama defense. Alabama experienced players are taking the, the young guys to task. in Alabama, and they brought one from across the pond. That's Lord, Lord Wedgwood, a member of the British Parliament. Wedgwood, China. Yep. He goes around the world promoting it, and he is, I might mention, a perfect 5-0 and now after this win tonight. So he's a very special part of the Bama success. Only fitting that you have Lord Wedgwood and Prince Webley in the same stadium. <laughs> and a royal performance tonight by Alabama. be the last play of the ball game. Danny Woodson kneels down. Well, I'm not sure that Red Goff thought that his team was going to be shut out, but that's the way it ends. Ten to nothing. Gene Stallings getting from his team what he wanted. He wanted a quarterback that would not get themselves beat. Danny Woodson doing just that. So the tide win this one between two top SEC teams. More to come. Welcome back to Brian Denny Stadium. Alabama defeating Georgia. The final score, 10 to nothing. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Eric Zire of Georgia, just for the fact that he survived the final minutes of the game, and Danny Woodson from Alabama. Woodson was 13 of 17 for 147 yards. Zire was 10 of 17 for 87 yards. Alabama improves its SEC record to 1-0. Now stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Postgame Report with Roger Twybell and Bo Schembechler.